Hey guys, Corey, Famous Media, and it's the big battle you've been waiting for. It's the Canon 1DX Mark II and the Nikon D5. So the Nikon D5, the Canon 1DX Mark II. If you're shooting on Nikon, you're most likely going for the D5. If you're shooting on Canon, you're most likely going for the 1DX Mark II. But what are the differences between these two cameras? Well, 20.2 megapixel for the Canon, 20.8 for the Nikon. No real difference there. You got 2.36 million dot LCD on the back of the Nikon, only 1.62 on the Canon. So the Nikon looks a little bit better. The Canon's faster at 14 frames a second, whereas the Nikon is only 12 frames a second. With the mirror lock, you get 16 on the Canon, 14 on the Nikon. However, the Nikon, all the rear buttons illuminate, so in the dark, you can see every button. The Canons do not. That's also a problem. One of the benefits of the Nikon is the illuminated rear panel and lights. Another benefit for the Nikon here is that the touchscreen is a true touchscreen. You can swipe your images to switch between them. You can pinch to focus and zoom and pretty much use the screen like an iPhone. Whereas the 1DX Mark II, you can only use the touch screen to zoom in or zoom out or tap to focus while in live view. So the Nikon, much more tech savvy. Here's another great thing about the Nikon D5. It's got dual XQD slots, whereas the Canon's got a CFast and a CF card, one of each. Now CFast is a tad bit, and I do mean a tad bit faster than XQD. It's also five times more expensive, and you only get one slot, so when it's full, no more 60 frames a second in video. Where the Canon does shoot 60 frames in 4K, the Nikon will not. The Nikon is Ultra HD, whereas the Canon is DCI full 4K, 4096 by 2160, whereas the Nikon is 3840 by 2160. So they've got their ups and downs for each camera, but it really comes down to what you're shooting. If you're truly shooting video only, then a Nikon D5 is not quite as good as the Canon 1DX Mark II. However, the Nikon is much better in low light. It is much better in low light. It'll go up to 3.2 million ISO, although it's not fully usable. Anything over 409,000 looks like crap. However, the Canon's limited to about 100,000 ISO, 102,000. So basically, if you're in a dark room to make it simple, if you're shooting on the Nikon at 640 ISO, you're probably gonna have to shoot the exact same settings on the camera, say f2.8. If everything's the same, you're gonna have to shoot roughly about 1,000 ISO. There's two-thirds of a stop to maybe even a full stop sensitivity difference between the cameras. I noticed that while shooting a wedding this morning that all my Nikon shots were at around 640. I had to get the Canon up to about 1,000 to 1250 to get the same shot at the same aperture with the same lighting. So the Nikon's better in low light, better sensitivity. If you're a photographer and you're shooting straight photos, it's gonna be arguable which one's better, but on paper, the Nikon is gonna have better low light, whereas the Canon's gonna shoot faster. But really what it comes down to is the photographer. These are just tools, and they're both really good tools. They just have benefits over one another depending on what you're looking to do. And if you're a Canon shooter, are you really going to jump ship to the Nikon D5? Because if you're not, the 1DX Mark II is spectacular. For video, motion JPEG, I have the Marvel Cine and the Technicolor Cine profiles in here. Absolutely brilliant. But the Nikon is got the illuminated panels, the battery lasts longer, it's got dual XQD slots. You can get a good XQD card these days for less than $100 and it's gonna be shooting at about 400 to 450 megabytes a second. The Canon will shoot 170 continuous frames, whereas the Nikon will do 200. And for some reason, the Nikon buffer doesn't seem to really fill up. It just continues to shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh, eventually, the Canon does start to slow down for a brief minute. That's just the experience I had. So that's what it really comes down to. DCI 4K, internal 4K, 60 frames a second. Nikon only does Ultra HD but the Nikon's better in low light, the rear panel's illuminated, it's got a better screen, higher quality and touch screen, whereas the Canon's only touch to focus. The Canon also weighs 1,580 grams, whereas the Nikon only weighs about 1,410. So if you're going neck and neck, the Canon's a little heavier. What a great way to test 
the 1DX versus the D5 then at night and the outer perimeter of Times Square so we don't get eaten alive by the swarms and swarms of people. We're at 6,400 on the 1DX Mark II, which is nothing for the 1DX Mark II at all. But I have a feeling that the Nikon D5 is going to fare a little better in darker situations. Quick focusing, even in the dark. Get it down to 3200 ISO at 100 shutter. Tracking focus. When you want to white balance the 1DX, you got to hit the menu button, go to your custom white balance. You have up to six preset white balances. You can set it from a photo that you took, or you can set it to take a photo right then and there. But with the Nikon, you just hold the white balance button, take a shot, it saves. Whereas the Canon, you got to go to the menu. It's definitely harder and definitely takes longer with the Canon uh, series of cameras. So the 1DX Mark II is not as user friendly as the Nikon for white balancing and it's not as accurate either. I know some people might say, oh, you know, I use Canon all the time, I have no problem with it. For me, it just seems that Nikon is much more accurate with white balancing and custom white balancing. Uh, the, the 1DX is good, it's just the Nikon is flawless. Like the D5's white balancing system is like all other Nikons, just flawless and so easy and quick very, very user friendly. Sixty four hundred ISO on the streets. You could probably get away with twelve thousand eight hundred, but we're going to lose dynamic range. But we definitely will push it. You want a picture? Let's get one. One second here, one, two, excellent. The 1DX Mark II, I did the video on that earlier today and I love the camera. For video, this camera is absolutely fantastic. not to overshadow the fact that it's a brilliant photographer's camera as well. And that's pretty much what this camera is intended for, is photography, but they really gave this camera a buttload of features for video. And it's a breeze using the thumbstick to adjust my focusing points where I want to shoot. about the same as the Nikon in that aspect. We're going to see which one tracks moving cars better and performs better in the low light right here on the streets. Real life test. Don't be fooled by the video. We're filming on the A7S and that camera is just legendary status in the dark. Images look wonderful. It's the middle of the night and it looks daytime. 1DX Mark II is fantastic in low light, as demonstrating right now. It's nine o'clock at night, the sun is fully set. Gonna get a shot of these buildings. 12,800 ISO. As you can see by the images, the 1DX Mark II is no slouch in low light, that's for sure. Looks like we may have had an accident over here, right in front of us. The 
be honest, 12,800 ISO is way too high, even in the dark. We're not gonna be able to get it unless we're at a thousand plus shutter. Here we are at a thousand shutter at night. It's insane. So let's switch over to video and see how the Canon 1DX Mark II does in video in low light, 12,800 ISO. So here we go, we're gonna do the same thing for the D5, F11, 4K, 12,800 ISO. And since it doesn't come with a flat profile like Nikon, we're using Technicolor CineStyle. Let's get to a reasonable ISO here. Maybe 1600. Ah! <laughs> and we stop down to F4. We can get a pretty good exposure, 4.5. We'll stop it down again. We'll get down to 640, which is where I'd really like to be at. And at 2.8, that's very possible. New York for you, I tell you. Never ending. The internal 4K at 60p and the high frame rate 1080, it's almost impossible to beat that. Let's do some 60p and 4K and some high frame rate 1080, and then we'll get the D5 and do some shots with that. It even gives you a little bar here on the screen when you're running out of record room for slow motion. I'm gonna go into 1080. 1080 all eye, high frame rate, 120 frames a second. Get the ISO up to about 1600, which this camera will do quite easily. Beautiful high frame rates. So I'm gonna do one Photo, we're gonna max it out. Let's do a photo at 51,200. We're gonna compare it to the Nikon. Gonna get a wide shot that I can compare the Nikon to. And that's 51,200. We're gonna go ahead and get the Nikon D5, do some video with that, talk about the features. I just wish the buttons lit up on this and I wish the touch screen was better. You can't swipe through, you can only touch the focus. The Nikon's got the backlit buttons. You can swipe, pinch to zoom. Uh, more like a smartphone, the screen is much better. And of course, the back end uh, lights up completely, whereas the Canon, you just get the top and back lights. But then again, it does high frame rate in HD and 60p internally 4K. Can't go wrong with that. But then again, the Nikon's better in low light and has dual XQD cards. Whereas this is one CFast, one CF. So in reality, it comes down to personal preference, but 
they each have their pros and cons. Let's grab the D5 and let's continue shooting. One of the things I love about the Nikon D5 is it just seems to be more accessible and user-friendly and quicker. So if you see here, the back of the screen lights up just like in the D5 video, review video I did. Here we are in the comparison video showing you the same thing. The Nikon D5 lights up like a Christmas tree. You can see every last button. One of the things the Canon doesn't have. The Nikon Focus is faster. That's just a plain fact. The D5 is faster. It doesn't matter what I do, it's like instant. Not saying the 1DX Mark II is bad because it's probably one of the greatest DSLRs ever made, the best Canon one for sure. But the D5 has got 153 auto focusing points and the 1DX Mark II is only 61. So 153 versus 61. Fifty-five selectable too on the Nikon D5. Fifty-one thousand two hundred ISO. To be honest, the image exposure is higher, which tells me that the Nikon is exposing more light, but the Canon seems like it might be cleaner. We'll look at these photos and I'll compare them, uh, but it looks like you're gonna do better in the shadows with the Canon, at least from the screen. The Nikon D5 is also slightly more comfortable to hold. I guess that's user preference, but it definitely is a little more comfortable to hold. Even Ray, my videographer, said the same thing. There's so many auto focusing points, 153, it just spans across the viewfinder. You're able to capture subjects moving even in the sides of your viewfinder. So someone comes up and they're all the way to the left, you can just move the, the focusing point right over and track them so quickly. The 1DX Mark II will do this as well, but 153 auto focusing points, that's a lot. We'll go 3200 ISO. We could have went to Times Square, but shooting here it's dark, or dark enough to really test the camera's low light, because that's what we want to do. We got a cyclist coming up here. I'm gonna track him in the pure dark. And she was going really quick. Spot on focus too. If you're not getting the finger, you're not in New York, remember? I'm gonna go ahead and turn some video on now. But before I do that, just to show what the Nikon can do, the limit is 409,000. 1DX Mark II. 3.2 million on the Nikon. So I'm gonna shoot right now at 800,000 ISO which is double the limit of the 1DX Mark II. Have to shoot at F4 at 8,000 shutter. So as you can see, not very usable, but the 1DX Mark II doesn't even have the ability to go this high. So it's basically a crappy image or no image. But we don't need that much ISO on the streets. 25,600. Really, really good quality for 25,000 ISO. Here we go, Ultra HD 24P. And the Nikon with Nikon's flat profile. It does video well, and with the limitation removed, you can see on this card I have over 24 minutes of video remaining, which is really, really good. With that limitation removed, the Nikon's a serious contender with the 1DX for video, but we can go back and forth all day as they're both great cameras. And this wasn't meant to be a technical test. It was meant to just be on the street, just kind of get an idea of the two cameras and what I feel, what I recommend, show you guys some images of it. I'm gonna go to 1080p. 
and do some slow motion and 24p in 1080. First, let's do some 24p in 1080. And we're doing this in full frame mode, which I can already tell from the screen is definitely sharper than the 1DX Mark II. Don't worry, I'm gonna bust out my sharpness test card and low light and see which camera is sharper in 1080 and in 4K and do a low light test. That's all coming up to really truly see what image quality is better. Let's go ahead and get the Nikon in crop mode. We're gonna do 24P in crop mode in 1080. This is giving us a three times crop, which is accurate for 1080p. Don't have to worry, worry about pixel binning or any of that nonsense with the video. It's the accurate sensor size, lots of reach. Forgive the handshake as I'm going handheld here and I don't have VR on this lens. Touch to focus. You're not going to be able to get a whole lot of wide shots in three times crop mode, but it is the accurate size of the sensor for 1080p. Now we're going to go ahead and let's do some 60p in 1080. And then we'll do 60p in the crop mode. I do like the fact that you get the 1.5 crop like the 1DX Mark II, but you also get the three times crop for 1080 and full frame for 1080, as well as both crops for uh, 60p. However, you don't get the 120 frames a second, the high frame rate in 1080. So the 1DX has got it beat for high frame rates. So here we are, full frame, 1080p, 60 for slow motion. The Nikon definitely has cleaner video at high ISO. That is for sure. How much so? Haven't done a full test, but it's definitely clean. Touchscreen makes focusing on a spot so much easier than having to move it with the joystick. So now let's go into three times crop mode here. 1080, 60 crop. The two biggest behemoths going head to head right now. I should almost just pull them out of my bag Put them right here and let them just fight it out like Rocky until someone's got a black eye. Well, I mean, or like a broken memory card door or something. And then, then that would be the winner. We let them battle right here. And then the first camera to lose its memory card door loses the battle. One thing I really like though with the Nikon is the play button and the trash button at the top. When you review an image, you hit play, you hit trash to delete it, and you confirm by hitting trash again. So play, trash, trash, it's gone. With the Canon, the play button's on the bottom of the screen, and then once you hit play, and you scroll through whichever images you want to delete, you have to hit the trash button, then you gotta use the joystick to turn it over to okay, and then hit okay to delete it. So it's much, much quicker to set the white balance. It's much quicker to delete images, to go through images. It's a touch screen that you can pinch and zoom. It's also much quicker uh, to change a picture profile and all the buttons light up. So overall, between the cameras for usability, the D5 is a much better camera for usability. A lot of Canon users might flame me for that, but the, the true fact is that for usability and being user-friendly, the D5 is the better camera. Unless you have Nikon to shoot photography on, but you're also a film shooter like myself who has a RED and has Sony A7 Blackmagic cameras and you've got a lot of Canon lenses like myself, 
then I can see myself buying the 1DX Mark II because it is phenomenal. But it's just the D5 is a brilliant photographer's camera. It's really hard to compete with it. It has 153 auto focusing points with intelligent group function and 3D tracking, and it's got brilliant phase detection on the auto focusing. Uh, so it's just it's just a brilliant camera. 1DX Mark II is no slouch, but the D5 is a beast. Going to get one last shot in 4K. And I guess we made that count. The bikes did some wheelies for us. We're at 1600 ISO in 4K. Awesome. Now on to the fun part. Starting off with a low light test, got the D5 on the right, the 1DX Mark II on the left. Both cameras perform pretty much neck and neck up until around 12,800 ISO where the 1DX Mark II starts to fall behind. We can't blame it. The Nikon hits high velocity and it's gone into outer space. Although most of the images above 409,000 are completely useless. It's worth mentioning though between 100 ISO and 3200 ISO, especially in between the 100 and 1600 range, the 1DX Mark II can pull significantly more detail out of the shadows with literally zero noise. It's almost mind blowing to take both cameras side by side and actually underexpose by two to three stops and then add two to three stops and post. The 1DX Mark II is clearly better there. Moving along to 25,600 ISO and I'm shocked the 1DX Mark II is actually going off into outer space with the D5. You really can't tell the difference between the two cameras side by side. Even at 51,200, you truly can't tell the difference. It's not till 102,400 you can see a slight difference. The Nikon is cleaner in the shadows with less grain, but the 1DX X Mark II is holding up beautifully. 204,800, you can see there's more reddish tint in the shadows and more noise. The Nikon is definitely cleaner here. And then we're gonna go ahead and move along to 409,600 and you can see the 1DX Mark II is starting to fall apart, but the Nikon is not doing too much better as it's looking pretty bad as well. Now Nikon just wants to show off of 819,200, although it's completely unusable. I don't know who'd wanna use this as an image. And moving along to 1.6 million IS so yes, you heard me right, 1.6 million. And as if that wasn't enough, they gave us 3.2 million. We get the double whammy, both completely useless in any situation. Now let's test out the cameras in low light in video mode, starting out in 1080p HD, full frame mode on the D5 for the first test, 800 and 1600 ISO, pretty much neck and neck. You can't really tell between the two cameras which one's better in low light, although the D5 is definitely sharper. Moving along to 3200 ISO, once again, the camera's pretty much neck and neck, although slightly more grain in the shadows. You can see it dancing around on the 1DX Mark II, but it's ever so slight. 6400 ISO, both cameras doing very well, although the D5 is slightly better. Once again, 12,800 ISO, that trend continues, although now it seems that the 1DX Mark II might be slightly sharper, but there's definitely more noise. 25,600, the noise gets even worse on the 1DX Mark II, but the D5 is holding up beautifully. 51,200, the 1DX Mark II taps out, the D5 continues to go and show off its high ISO range, although most of it is pretty much useless above 102,400, as you can see by the D5 images on the right. 204,800 is looking really bad, and it's only good for surveillance footage. Moving along to 409,600, you can't even use this for surveillance footage. It's really that bad, but what do you expect? It's half a million ISO. Now we're going to 819,200 ISO, and again, it's getting even worse. It's almost hard to find any traces of an actual image. 1.6 million ISO, again, Nikon showing off, looks absolutely terrible. It's almost absurd to have this high ISO in video. At 3.2 million, once again, Nikon saying, hey, I can do that, but you can't do it very well because there's actually no image there, it's white noise. Now we're gonna do the same test, but with the D5 in three times crop mode. 800 ISO, it's looking pretty much neck and neck. By the time we move along to ISO 1600, you can see they're still pretty much neck and neck. The D5 is actually not going to be as good in low light when it's in three times crop mode, as you'd expect. 
As we look here at 3200 ISO, the 1DX Mark II still neck and neck with the D5, moving along to 6400 ISO, and again, they're still pretty much neck and neck, although the 1DX Mark II seems to be very slightly cleaner. At 12,800 ISO, the 1DX Mark II is now officially sharper and better in low light with less noise. All the blocking and dancing noise in the D5 at 25,600, it's clearly visible that the 1DX Mark II is better in low light and sharper at this point. It can't go any further, but the D5 can. Why? I don't know, but it definitely doesn't look good. At 51,200 and moving along to 102,400, the image looks insanely terrible. In fact, they should have cut this off 25,000, but they left it open for us to crank the ISO and show off yet again. 204,800 ISO. I just can't even use words to describe how horrible that image looks. Uh, 409,600 is something out of a horror movie. That's how terrible it looks. And by the time we get to 819,200 ISO, I'm sitting here scratching my head wondering why we have this ISO. It's not usable at all. This looks like something filmed in 1920. 1 1.6 million ISO. I don't know what it would possibly be good for. And 3.2 million is just a waste. It's almost like there's no sensor in the camera anymore. Now let's go ahead and test out the cameras in 4K, the Nikon D5 Ultra HD 1DX Mark II DCI 4K. Both look pretty much neck and neck at 800, but moving along to 1600 ISO, you can see slightly more noise in the 1DX Mark II, although aesthetically more pleasing and a whole lot sharper. 3200 ISO continues the trend. 1DX Mark II is so much sharper, and even though there's more noise, it looks more pleasing. Even at 6400 ISO, as you can see, the Nikon is much cleaner. I don't like the smooth look as much as I do of the filmic grain look on the 1DX Mark II. Even at 12,800, the Nikon is much cleaner, but I still prefer the 1DX Mark II. Moving along to 25,600 ISO, the 1DX Mark II has tapped out, rightfully so. It's a graceful exit for the 1DX Mark II. Unfortunately, for the Nikon D5, it's dying a horrible, slow death. And 51,200 is definitely not making anything better. 102,400 is to the point where it's pick your poison. You either have no video footage or you have a whole bunch of noise with traces of an image somewhere. 204,800 is starting to make me think if there was an award given out for the most noise in an image, Nikon D5 would totally win that. 409,600, yep, I was right. Nikon would definitely win the most noise ever in a video clip for this right here. Now it's time for the sharpness test. I did not edit these photos at all or add any sharpening. I went straight from RAW out to JPEG using the same lens on both cameras, crop in 300%. The 1DX Mark II is noticeably sharper than the Nikon D5. It actually looks much better. Moving along to the 4K test, at 100% crop, we can't really tell which one is sharper. Once again, I use the same lens throughout this test on both cameras to keep things as close as possible, and they're pretty much neck and neck in this test. I may have missed the focus ever so slightly in the 1DX Mark II, as it's definitely sharper than the D5 in 4K. Here we go at 1080p with the Nikon D5 in full frame mode. We're gonna crop in 300% to see which one's sharper, and the D5 is definitely sharper. It's kind of soft on both images, but slightly better on the D5. Now we're gonna go into three times crop mode in 1080p on the Nikon D5. At 100% crop, we can't tell which one's sharper, so we're gonna go ahead and crop in 300%. Now as you can see, the Nikon D5 yet again is still sharper. So in 4K, the 1DX Mark II is better. In 1080, the D5 is better. Here's just a little example of the 1DX Mark II's touchscreen. You can touch to focus. As you can see, I'm moving the focus point around. But if I wanna go ahead and zoom in on an image, I actually have to hit the magnifying glass to do that and then I can kind of move the focus point around while doing that, or I can punch in again, but I'm not able to drag that with my finger. You have to use the joystick to do this as it's not a full featured touchscreen. I really wish they had put a full featured touchscreen in this camera. It would have made it so much better. Now, if you're gonna play back an image, you're gonna see that you can't swipe between the images with your finger. It's just not a full featured touchscreen. I really wish they had done that. You can't pinch to zoom to check your focus point. So if you wanna zoom in and check, you're gonna have to use the magnifying glass. Now here we are in live view video, touch to focus works brilliantly. And if we wanna punch in, we have to use the magnifying glass as we can't pinch with our fingers to do that either. It's pretty much only good for touch to focus while in live view. Really wish they had given it a full featured touch screen. Now with the Nikon, you can see I'm swiping through my images. I'm gonna be able to pinch to zoom so that I can see uh, which image is sharp. And if I've missed my focus, you can also hit play or back 
on the screen to play video and to scroll through. It's a full featured touchscreen as you can see right now I'm pinching to zoom and I can check my focus accurately and quickly and also any of the uh, buttons on the screen like the arrows or the play or the back you can touch all of that it is a 100% full featured touchscreen it really makes things super easy to be able to check your focus so quickly and accurately and then pinch out to see more photos or you can pinch out again to make the thumbnails even smaller to check all your photos quickly is just a really great feature to have the battle of the Nikon D5 and the Canon 1DX Mark II two brilliant cameras both have pros and cons and if you're asking yourself which one should you buy, it really depends on what your needs and goals are and if you're heavily invested in one brand or the other. If you have a bunch of Canon glass and Canon bodies, you should stick with the 1DX Mark II. If you're heavily invested in Nikon with their glass and bodies, I would just stay with Nikon. Either way, you will be happy with your respected brand's flagship model. The D5 and the 1DX Mark II are both amazing pieces of equipment. And if you're a wildlife photographer or a sports and action photographer, you truly can't go wrong with either camera. So, which camera's for you? Well, that depends. If you're already shooting Nikon, stick with the D5. If you're shooting Canon, you stick with the 1DX Mark II. However, if you're shooting on Nikon and you shoot a bunch of film projects, you're also doing video and have a lot of film cameras or a couple of them with Canon mounts, it's worth the jump for the 60p if you need to have a DSLR with 60p internal DCI 4K makes it brilliant or you can wait for the 1DC Mark II. However, for everybody else, if you already don't have a professional DSLR and you're looking to get into one, it really comes down to what are you looking to do? So also the D5 is more user friendly. All the buttons in the back are backlit, whereas on the 1DX Mark II, they are not. It's easier to review and delete images on the D5 versus the 1DX Mark II having to pick an image, then pick the delete button, then use the joystick to scroll over to OK, whereas on the Nikon, you play it, you pick your image, you hit the trash button, then you hit the trash button again to confirm. So it's tap, tap, it's gone, versus tapping and scrolling over and hitting OK. So it's more user friendly. You can also select your picture profiles much easier. You hit the picture profile button on the back of the camera, done. Whereas the can, you gotta go in the menu to a certain degree. It's just overall more user friendly on the Nikon. Canon are on it for the video. Like someone else said on a website, I read a review, this individual said the D5 seems to be outdated and was obsolete the moment it even came out. That is completely incorrect. If I was to say which one of these was obsolete and we weren't talking about video, I don't think either are obsolete. But if I had to pick one, it's definitely not going to be the D5, considering it's more user friendly and has a more advanced autofocusing system. New York. So hopefully I've been able to cover all the issues for you. As you can see, we're in traffic here doing the outro to this video. But in reality, they're both fantastic cameras and I will eventually buy both of them especially the 1DX for video. But for a photographer's camera, you can't go wrong with the D5 because they're both great. I guess the decision's really up to you. I can't make it for you. So hopefully I've been able to help you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also be sure to sign up for our newsletter, all the newest deals from B&H, Adorama, uh, Amazon. I'm gonna put in the newsletter once a week. I'm gonna send you guys some up-to-date stuff when the newest reviews are coming famousmedia.com forward slash blog on the right hand side of the screen you can sign up for the newsletter also facebook.com forward slash famous media you can see it on the left hand side you can sign up there as well don't forget facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash happy shooting photo and you can check out that group sign up in there and we'll approve you so you can post your photos and share your work list it's a nice community still need beta testers for the forum boards email me corey at famousmedia.com Hopefully this review has been helpful for you guys head to head, the Nikon D5 and the 1DX Mark II. Don't forget to subscribe and to purchase any of these cameras or any of the gear we review. Please use the links in the information box below on YouTube to support the channel and keep the reviews coming. And hopefully you've had a great time with me and Ray. We're out here at 10, 11 o'clock at night shooting these videos for you. I'm Corey with Famous Media from Manhattan. Happy shooting.